Aloha, Chair Suji, Chair Lee, members of the committee. My name is Ashley Lukens, and I'm the director of the Hawaii Center for Food Safety. Um, we're an environmental and public health advocacy organization representing over 10,000 people in the state of Hawaii. Um, I want to take a moment and say that I'm here on behalf of my members, many of whom reside on the neighbor islands and were unable to attend today's hearing. But they did attend a hearing last year on this same measure. We had over 100 neighbor island community members attend, um, and they were not able to testify because of time constraints. And I think that, that disillusioned them from coming over today um, and trying to participate in the conversation. Um, we represent people in this community that are concerned about chronic, low-level daily exposure to pesticides in their environment particularly in environments where their children play, um, where their families live. People like Malia Chun, um, whose mother just testified on her behalf. Um, this bill is a product of an ongoing conversation in our state that is not going away. It doesn't matter how many op-eds in the Sunday newspaper come out and mischaracterize our concerns as you know, fear-mongering activists from the mainland, people in Hawaii are concerned about pesticide exposure. And they're concerned primarily about the exposure associated with GE field test sites. They're not concerned about um, whether or not a house is being tented near their home. Why? Because they're notified. Because they know when it's gonna happen because a bright, colorful tent goes over the home telling them, hey, you have a choice whether or not you want to be in and near that home. We do not have a choice whether or not to send our children to school next to a field that is allowed to spray <coughs> restricted use pesticides on a regular basis. Only the state has the capacity to regulate that kind of agricultural operation. So that's why we're coming to the table asking you, please, do something to A, increase transparency. Let us know the pesticides that are being sprayed. Let us know when. Give us that information so that we can make a choice. And two, please create increased protections for our most vulnerable communities. California has passed buffer zones in 12 of their agricultural counties. It has not led to the decimation of agriculture in California. Rather, what this bill does is says, let's go to the table and let's honestly try to work out the nuts and bolts of what a buffer zone project in Hawaii could look like in ways that A, address the concerns of farmers, but B, also respond respectfully to the concerns of the community. This can no longer be a conversation about fear-mongering versus farmers. The people who want to see these protections absolutely support agriculture. They absolutely support local food production. But they don't feel that their health should be compromised in the interest of large-scale chemical companies developing and testing new varieties of GE crops here which are largely to demonstrate herbicide tolerance. These companies are not growing food. They are not growing seed. They're developing new crop varieties here. And we don't feel that that industrial farming practice should come at odds with our family's health and safety. There has to be a compromise. There has to be a middle ground. My members and the communities we represent, we are not going anywhere. So if a five school pilot program is not a compromise, a way to bring people to the table and work this issue out, I don't know what is. Because if the industry is gonna to continue to dig their heels in every session and say no, no, no disclosure, no buffer zones, no regulation, then the community is gonna come back stronger and stronger every session. So it's time. It's time for us to come to the table and work this out. Thank you. Thank you very much.